And now, Herbert Marshall as Ken Thurston, the man called X. Ken Thurston first saw the girl in the lobby of a New York building in which the offices of the Bureau were located. She was pleading with the elevator starter, pleading in a dazed, frightened manner. The man who is known as X, I must speak with him. It is about Maggiore, you understand? Per favore, please, I must speak with him. I, I must! A few minutes later, the girl sits quietly, a little frightened, in a private office at the bureau as Ken talks to her sympathetically. So you want to talk with this man called X? See, si. see, si, the man who is X. You know him, senor? I think I can help him find him, if you'll help me. Now, suppose you start by telling me your name. My, my name, senor? Yes, that's right. But I do not know my name. That is strange, is it not? I, I do not know my own name. Oh, it's not important. It'll come to you. Do you remember why you came here to see him? But I have told you, Signor. It is about Maggiore. You understand, Signor? About about Maggiore. Maggiore? No, no, you do not understand. But this man who is ex, he will know. See, he must know. Of course, but when we see him, you must tell me where you're from, what is troubling you. But I cannot do this, Signor. I do not remember. I can remember nothing. Only that I must see the man called X. About Maggiore. Please, per favore, take me to him, signor. He must help me. Please, please. Yes, I'll take you to him. But first, you'll rest a bit. Now, here, come with me. Come this way. Miss Brooks, will you see that the signorina rests comfortably for a half hour or so? And get in touch with Dr. Bowman at the hospital. I want her placed in his care. Certainly, Mr. Thurston. Here, you come with me, dear. Now, everything will be all right. Grazie. Did you get it on the dictograph, Chief? Yes, I got it, Ken. An amnesia case, eh? Sounds like it. Hmm, think it might be a fake? Dr. Beaumont will tell us. Mind if I use your office phone, Chief? No, go right ahead. Hello, Westman. Thurston. The uh, Spartivento sailed from Naples last week en route to New York. The Maggiore Art Collection was aboard. The mm, Maggiore uh -huh. Art Collection, of course. Yeah, now check on it and see where it is now, will you? Thanks. So you think the girl was talking about the Maggiore Collection, eh, Ken? Could be. What do you know about the collection, Chief? Well, let's see. It's world famous, looted by the Nazis, recently recovered, and it's coming over here for some kind of public exhibition, isn't it? That's right. It's going to tour the country. Proceeds going to a... Uh, Rehabilitation fund for Italian war orphans. Yeah, but if that's what the girl was talking about, why should she look for you? The Bureau hasn't any interest in an art collection. I think we have, Chief. Huh? That collection means a new life for thousands of Italian kids. A chance to dig themselves out of the mess the war left them in. Well, sure, Ken, that's but I... That's why the collection is our responsibility. We've got to see that those kids get that chance. That they grow up as the next generation's decent citizens. And not as stormtroopers. First in here. Oh, yes, Ethman. Yeah. I see. Thanks. Part event or doctor this morning, Chief. The Maggiore collection went through customs about an hour ago. And what do you want us to do, Ken? Chief, the truck taking the collection to the Norris Art Gallery was hijacked. The guard and driver killed. And the paintings are gone. <laughs> Where are we going anyways, Mr. Thurston? Well, I'm not sure you want to go, Pagon, but the chief thought you might do a little job for the Bureau. Mr. X, that's out. Definitely, positively out. I don't want no jobs for the Bureau. That's what I thought. Well, can I drop you anywhere before I get to the Norris Art Gallery? The Norris Art Gallery? Well, that's where the Maggiore collection is. That's where it was going to be, before it was stolen. Stolen? But that thing's worth ten million bucks. Yeah. I'll drop you at this corner, Pagon. Ten million simoleons. Should be a pretty good reward for getting that stuff back, eh? Oh, the insurance company will pay off pretty well, sure. 
Not as long as you're not interested. <laughs> uh, why should we be so hasty, Mr. X? Naturally, I don't want a job, but uh, I'll be glad to help you out. Yeah. Uh, just for old lang time, you understand. Uh, and 20 bucks a day in expenses, of course. Straight now, Pagan? Oh, sure. It's a cinch. While you talk to the manager, I make like a big shot art expert. Good. There's the gallery. Let's go in. There's the office, Mr. Thurston. It says Muriel Bowen, manager. Yeah. Okay, Pagan. I'll see you back at the car. You understand, Miss Bowen, that I consider the loss of the Maggiore collection to be the result of unforgivable negligence on your part. I'm not particularly interested in your thoughts on the subject, Mr. Cameron. Well, as manager of this gallery, you should be. The dividing line between unforgivable and uh, criminal negligence may be a very narrow one. Good day, Miss Bowen. Pardon me, please. Certainly, yes, sir. May I come in, Miss Bowen? Why not? You're practically in now. Thanks. Did you enjoy your little eavesdrop? Sorry, I didn't mean to move in on a private conversation. That was J.B. Cameron, wasn't it? One of the uh, sponsors of the Maggiore Collection? I'm sure that Mr. Cameron and I don't know nearly as much about you. Oh, my name's Ken Thurston. I'm interested in the collection, too. How nice. An official interest? Let's put it this way. There's a good deal of money tied up in it that'll be lost if it's not recovered. Only an insurance man would be interested in the money involved. I gather that Cameron seemed to think that you might be. What else have you gathered, Mr. Thurston? Only that you're the manager of the gallery and that your name is Muriel Bowen. I'm 28, single, and I've been here ever since I left art school six years ago. And I know absolutely nothing about the robbery. Does that help you? It might, if I could rely on that information. You will have to decide that for yourself, Mr. Thurston. Miss Goose, senor. That is a problem with which perhaps I may assist you. Oh? I am Luca Rosselli, senor. Representing the Italian organization which sent the majority collection over here. Well, I'm glad to know you, Rosselli. Your Rosselli is also a carbon copy of J.B. Cameron, in a way, Mr. Thurston. Go ahead, Luca. Tell the man how dishonest I am. Oh, I do not say that, Signorina. I accuse no one of anything. I know only that it is of vital import that those paintings be recovered. You sound like an art lover. Art? I know nothing of art. I'm here to collect revenue for displaying those paintings. Money that is needed badly in Italy for the war often. Well, at least someone here realizes that those children will suffer the real loss. You're a very unusual insurance man, Mr. Thurston, placing the interests of Italian orphans above that of your company. This is a very unusual case, Miss Bowen. Yes, I know. You see, the real insurance man was here 15 minutes ago. That makes your interest in this matter most unusual. <laughs> Pagan, what luck did you have? Can always depend on his elsewhere. You know that Cameron guy? What about him? He thinks I'm a big shot art collector. You know, he's a collector himself. Specializes in Da Vinci painting. What's so important about that? Well, maybe I can pick up a bit of change. After all, I've got a friend who paints Da Vinci's even better than Da Vinci. I think you can make a better deal with Cameron. I can? How? Find the Maggiore collection for him. That's got two genuine Da Vinci's in it. the hurry-up call for me to come here to the hospital. They're going to get some answers from that little Italian girl. Oh, and she was faking amnesia. No, no, Bowman's given her an extensive examination. She's undergone traumatic shock with loss of memory. Yes, but where does the connection with the Maggiore robbery come in? Chief, I'm convinced that girl's mind holds the key to it. We've got to unlock it. But if she's got amnesia... Bowman's going to try sodium pentothal. 
Sodium pentothal. The stuff the army psychiatrists use for battle fatigue. Yeah. This girl has what amounts to the same thing. Some horrible shock has, has blocked her mind. But Beaumont's going to get her now. And within a few hours, we should have the answers to everything. Oh, hello, Beaumont. All set to go. I'm afraid not, Thurston. What's the matter? Something wrong? Well, I went to get that girl a little while ago. The room was empty. Empty? Well, how'd she get out? I don't know. I ordered a search. It's failed to turn her up. I'm sorry, Thurston, but that girl's disappeared. Continue with Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall. The Maggiore art collection has been stolen. Thousands of Italian war orphans will be without rehabilitation unless it's recovered. And the girl who didn't remember, whose mind holds the key to the mystery, has disappeared. Now, an hour later at the Bureau office, Ken is talking to one of the Bureau's agents over the phone. Yeah, keep the knowledge gallery covered, Esmond. I want to report on everything that Muriel Bowen and Luca Rosselli do. Right. Call me back when you have anything. Oh, hello, Chief. Anything new? Not a thing, Ken. The girl seems to have dropped off the face of the earth. We've got to find her, Chief, before it's too late. Ken, are you sure we're not kicking up a big cloud of dust over nothing? Those paintings are bound to show up when they're offered for sale. They'll never be sold on the open market. There are collectors who will buy them purely for personal satisfaction. Yes? Oh. For you, Ken. Thanks. Hello. Hello, Mr. Thurston. This is Muriel Bowen. Yeah, I recognize your voice. How flattering. How do you get this number? A delightful friend of yours, the art collector. I believe his name is Zell Schmidt. I might have known. Well, don't feel too badly about it, Mr. Thurston. You see, you don't have to bother about the Maggiore collection anymore. Oh, why not? Because it was just returned to the gallery not five minutes ago. <laughs> trying to get into the gallery, Mr. Thurston. Nobody's home. What are you doing here, Pagan? Oh, I just came back to get Mr. Cameron's address. I got a painting to sell him. A brand new Da Vinci. Strictly a part of my job for the bureau, you understand. Yeah, well, forget about it. Your job is over. Huh? The Maggiore print paintings have been returned. They're in the gallery now. Oh, no, they're not. What do you mean? Oh, I was just inside there. By accident, the key I just happened to have in my pocket fit at the back door. <laughs> And I know a Bellini or Da Vinci when I see one. And I didn't see one. Let's get to that rear door. Sure. It's right down in the back of this driveway. There it is, Mr. Thurston. Right where that big truck is parked. Yeah, let's take a look at that truck. It's a truck, so what? A closed panel job. With a few bullet holes in it. Bullet holes? Mr. X? Yeah. This is the truck that was hijacked. Hey, then maybe the paintings are still in there. Well, Mr. X, are they? No, but something else is. Huh? What? A bureau agent named Esmond. With a bullet in his head. <laughs> Thurston. May I come in, Muriel? Why, of course, Mr. Thurston. I'm honored. Thanks. 
I, uh, I suppose you stopped by about that telephone call. An explanation might help. It was merely a stupid mistake. One of the attendants told me the truck had been returned. I misunderstood, thinking he meant the painting. I called you before I checked. Yeah, that could happen to anyone. You should have told me you were going to drop in. I'd have had the apartment more presentable. Oh, you wouldn't have been here at all. Why, Mr. Thurston, how can you say such things? Those suitcases and half-packed clothes said them first. Ah, the evil finger of suspicion. It moves, it writes, and still spells my name. Why not try erasing it? Never erase a line once drawn seeking perfection. The line may be improved, but the soul of art destroyed. My art teacher taught me that once. Art school, the Matisse and Picasso on your wall. Painting means a lot to you, doesn't it, Muriel? You've uncovered my scarlet secret, Mr. Thurston. Yes, it means almost everything. My job at the Norris Gallery. I wonder if you can understand how I feel about it. As though it were a sort of trust. I can understand that. And can you understand how I felt when the Maggiore collection was stolen? A collection I was responsible for? You can't run away from responsibility, Muriel. There's no law that says a person is a criminal because he can't face his own conscience. No. But there is a law against kidnapping. Kidnapping? That nurse's uniform on the Devonport. Too bad you didn't get it packed before I came in. Where's the girl, Muriel? In the bedroom? Yes, Ken. Yes, she is. Mr. Cameron, where else could you pick up such a bargain? A genuine Da Vinci. And for only, uh, shall we say, uh, 5,000 bucks? That is quite a bargain, Mr. Zellschmidt. Why let it go so reasonably? <laughs> you hit the nail on the hammer, Mr. Cameron. Yeah, You know how it is when you need some ready cash. Or need to get rid of a stolen painting. Stolen? But I swear by the father of my father, uh, Mr. Cameron. What about that, Roselli? Is this Da Vinci part of the Maggiore collection? Senor Cameron, that painting was never in any collection. You're so right, Signor Rossilli. <laughs> it was passed down in my family. From hand to mouth, you understand. It, uh... <clears throat> Your pardon, Mr. Cameron. There's a Mr. Ken Thurston to see you. Oh, no. Uh, show him in, please, William. Yes, sir. This way, please, Mr. Thurston. Thank you. Hope you don't mind my barging in on you like this, Mr. Cameron. No, not at all, Mr. Thurston. You're the uh, insurance man Rossilli was telling me about, aren't you? I'd like to talk to you about the collection. Oh, yes, of course. Rossilli dropped in for the same reason. Frankly, we got nowhere, and uh, we're just amusing ourselves listening to a sales talk about this Da Vinci copy. Copy? Any fool would know that, Zellschmidt. Well, look, look at the necklace on the portrait. The links in several places are not even joined. Now, do you think that Da Vinci would ever make a mistake like that? But the... A copy is bound to look pretty shabby compared to the paintings you have here, Cameron. Yes. They are pretty fine, aren't they? Yes, that Frank Howell, for instance. One of the best I've ever seen. <laughs> I practically had to kidnap the owner in Amsterdam to keep the Frick collection from getting it. And that uh, coil. I don't think he's ever had a finer feeling for the haze of twilight than in that one. No. No, it cost me 10000 more than I wanted to pay. Old man Carpenter was bidding against me. But I got oh, it. Oh, senores, please. This is all very interesting, but we should be discussing the majority collection. Art is not as important at this time as those children in Italy. You're right, Gina Vaselli. And I've good news for you. You found a young girl, an amnesia case, who apparently knows all about it. Why, that's wonderful, Thurston. But if she has amnesia, how can she tell you anything? She's going under sodium pentothal at the hospital tonight. I think she's going to tell us all we need to know. Sixty-one. 
63. Lights, please, nurse. All right, Thurston, she's ready. We can begin. Now, you understand the procedure? I think so, Doctor. We've got to make a face the thing that brought on the traumatic shock. Bring it out in the open. You're here because the man called X is the one thing she's clinging to. So when she talks directly to you, answer her. But when we reach the point where the trauma began, I'll take over and reconstruct the situation with her. I understand. Good. Now ask her if she can hear you. Can you hear me, Signorina? This is the man called X. Can you hear me? I can hear. Signor X. You were looking for me, Signorina? Si. Si, I was looking for you. Friends. Friends. Friends of yours told you about me? Children. Naples. You helped them. Ask her why she needed help. Why do you need help, Signorina? It is about Maggiore. About Maggiore. The Maggiore art collection. I see. The paintings. I've come for the children. Nothing can happen. Nothing. You must help. You must help. Help with what? What help did you need? Where? The boat. The boat from Naples. It... They told me. Help them. They told me. You're aboard the boat, Signorina. You understand? Aboard the boat. No! No! You're aboard the boat sailing from Naples to the United States. No! Aboard the boat with the Maggiore Art no! Collection. No! You cannot do it! You cannot do it! Why can't I do it? The children! Nothing can happen to them. Nothing. What do I care about the children? What do they mean to me? What do you say that? You of all people, how can you say that? Those children mean nothing to me. Only those paintings matter. I do not believe you. No. After the war, what we've been through together, you cannot steal it. You cannot. I'm going to steal it. Do you hear me? I'm going to. You can't stop me. No. I will not let you. I will not let. What do you care whether I steal those paintings or not? How can you say that? How can you? What does it matter to you? Why do you care? Why do I care? Are we not? Are we not? Why do you care? Why do you care? How can you say that? Luca, Luca, mio fratello. Luca, my own brother. How can you say that? Bravo, sir. So the secret's out at last. Keep quiet, you fool. You'll endanger the patient's welfare. Do not endanger your own welfare by any foolish moves, doctor. Look, look, I'm here, Fratello. My own brother. Stealing. It's look. all right, Nina. It's all right. There's nothing to be afraid of. Quiet now. Everything's all right. Just wait. Just wait. No, do not move either, Thurston. I will not hesitate to use this gun. I know, Rosetti. Just like you use it on Esman when he caught you driving the truck back to the gallery to throw suspicion on Muriel. Now, see. It is unfortunate that you discovered my sister. Otherwise, you would have suspected only Signorina Bowen. No, Rosselli, you gave yourself away. By trying too hard to convince me you knew nothing about art. And were only concerned about money for the children. But you slipped when you told Pagan why his copy of Da Vinci was a fake. No amateur would have noticed. Muriel suspected you, too. Signorina Bowen? Yes. That's why she tried to get Nina out of town. She was afraid you'd find her and kill her to keep her from talking. And you would have, too, wouldn't you, Rosselli? She's a fool, senor. Why should I, I not kill her? Sure. What's a little murder compared to money? Espen, your sister, thousands of kids in Italy whose future depends on those paintings. Well, you're not going to get away with it, Rosselli. Oh, brave words, senor Thurf. But words will not stop me from pulling this trigger and disposing of all of you. I figured that. Okay, Chief, turn on the lights. You bet, Sam. Yes. Hold those men. What, what? It, Chief? He's going to shoot. Oh. Nice going, Ken. Trap worked out perfectly. That's all the proof we need. Except one thing. He didn't tell us where the paintings are. I think you'll find them at Cameron's, Chief. Cameron? Yeah. In some secret gallery where he can sit and gloat over them. They didn't represent art to him any more than they did to Rosselli. To one, possession. The other, money. And it's all over, eh, Ken? No, Chief. It's just beginning. To some thousands of kids in Italy. You know, those kids are like a blank canvas. And we're the painters. What we put into that canvas will determine its future. Maybe a masterpiece whose effect will be felt for generations. 
may be a worthless smear that'll wind up in the junk pile of the world. I wonder which it's going to be. 